thrill me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Review It Rob Show. I am your host, the champion of the Throw Me Podcast Network. Can't wait to talk about that here in a little bit. I am Review It Rob. Appreciate you all joining in to listen to this show. As always, you y'all are the best. So, so, so excited that you join me for this show. Gonna have uh Maybe a shorter episode here because this week there is a big thing happening with the DC Universe, uh, which is going to lead to me doing two shows. So won't have too much DC news on the show. going to be honest, we only have one thing to talk about DC-wise on this episode. And then, you know, I got your horror treats and then some other other goodies before we close out the show. But as always, appreciate you joining in and supporting this show as well. Support the Throw Me Podcast Network, man. Uh, we got all kinds of great shows on this uh, on this network. You can find them all wherever you listen to your podcast. And of course, you can find them on our YouTube at the Throw Me Podcast Network on YouTube. You can find us posting on the Instagram, on Facebook, all kinds of good stuff going on there. Uh, we have a Patreon where there's all kinds of amazing, cool content going down as well, including what we did over the weekend with the Rumble game. I will talk about that again in just a moment. And, of course, I have some uh, fun shows I'm working on at the moment as well for the Patreon. You join in there, join for a dollar, man, whatever helps. Uh, to support the network continuing to grow is very much appreciated as well continuing to grow make sure you like subscribe and share the throw me podcast network with everybody that you can think of to share it with and speaking of sharing we have a t public where we got all of our shows are represented there with t-shirts uh, stickers what laptop cases posters what have you you can get there on t public so go check that out uh you know again all kinds of stuff for the Throwing Podcast Network for you to indulge in and enjoy. And I hope you do indulge and enjoy in everything we got because I am very, very excited about this network and the things we continue to do. Now, teased a lot of things here. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I am the champion, not just the champion of the Throwing Podcast Network, but the first ever ever champion of the throw me podcast network man this went down over the weekend we did the rumble game for the wwe's royal rumble event that took place pretty solid event if i do say so myself as we are on the road to wrestlemania and the throw me podcast network you saw us posting hopefully on our social medias if you didn't come on man you gotta follow and like on our social medias then you probably should have got the notification as well on the youtube if you um, are liked and subscribed to the YouTube. You got the notification that we went live on our YouTube for both Rumble matches, the women's and the men's Royal Rumble, and played the Rumble game and had a good time and very close battle, very tough battle, very tough battle. But in the end, it was looking rough for you, boy. It was looking rough for me, but pulled it out, man. I was able to get the win and become the first ever champion of the Throw Me Podcast Network. They can't take it away from me. I will go down in history. I am a trivia fact for the rest of time when it comes to the Throw Me Podcast Network. I am the first ever Throw Me Podcast Network champion. If you can't tell, I'm pretty excited about that. I deserve it. I definitely deserve it. But uh, it was fun. It was a great time. We're going to continue to do fun events like that. So not to, you know, harping on you and continue to push it on you or anything like that. I'm not pushing on you. I just want you all to enjoy in on this network and have a good time with all of us at the network. So again, just make sure you like subscribe and have those notifications set up. So you can join in on all the fun uh, of the throw me podcast network and things that will come down the line. Uh, Cause we got all kinds of fun stuff planned. Now, other than that, you can see that the title of this episode is guardian of that 90 show. Uh, if you listened to last week's episode, which I hope you did, I talked about my thoughts on that 90 show so far. Uh, so that means I didn't finish the season at the time when I record that episode. I have since finished the first season of that 90 show. I'm going to give you my thoughts on that. But I uh, called it Guardian of that 90 show for a couple reasons. One, I am still playing the PlayStation. I don't think it's a PlayStation exclusive game. I'm still playing the Guardians of the Galaxy video game. 
<laughs> it's not a PlayStation exclusive game. It's on it's on all the platforms, it seems, but I playing it. I'm playing it on the PlayStation 5 and having just the absolute best time with this video game. Uh, quick review, I'm still not done with it. I don't get much time to game, but when I do get some time lately, it's been to play this game. I've been so excited to jump into it every single time. Like, uh, you know, you've heard me say it 100,000 times on the show by now that I'm not like a Marvel guy. Now, I do feel a bit of a change. I don't know if it's because I'm getting, you know, older or what to where I'm like loosening up my... um dislike of marvel like i'm interested in going back and watching the marvel movies and all that stuff and seeing how how i feel i don't know if i'll change that much because i'm still you know I, I still see the movies for what they are <laughs> but you know i other things about marvel i'm like interested in checking out like for example this guardians game and the guardians are the characters that to begin with when it come when it came to the marvel movies and all that that i was not all that interested in i'm like a talking raccoon in a tree that only says i am groot what the hell that sounds stupid right um, but ended up watching the movie and ended up loving it. It's probably, you know, it's not even probably, it's one of my favorite Marvel movies. It's definitely a, you know, it's up there, you know, haven't thought about it in a while, um, ranking wise with the Marvel movies, but you know, we did that Haunters podcast, Disnoids episode so long ago. Um, and I believe my top three were all the Captain America films, which may still be true because Captain America is my favorite thing that's happened in the MCU, but uh, and the Spider-Man stuff and the Guardians are the uh, the top things for me in the MCU. But I was excited to check this game out. And this game kind of it's, it's like flew under the radar. I got the PlayStation Plus and I saw it on the the games catalog. I'm like, yeah, why not? I'll download it for free and check it out. Why not? Because I don't remember much talk about this game and you know seeing you know anything going down. I think maybe the Marvel Avengers game had something to do with that, because I know that game got some flack, um, and I haven't played that yet, but I do have it downloaded, I'll, I'll check that out next, I still need to play Gotham Knights, by the way, I'm kind of, you know, it's interesting, because I, I bought Gotham Knights during uh, Black Friday, and I haven't even played the thing yet, because I want to go back through the Arkham games, but then I got the PlayStation Plus, and I saw this game catalog, and I got distracted, so <laughs> I need to, need to get into that, but I'm going to finish Guardians, and then I'll probably play the Avengers game, because if I don't like it, I can get it off my uh, <laughs> memory. But that was a big download, too, by the way. But now, with the Guardians game, I'm just having the absolute blast. And a lot of it has to do with the characters are fun. Now, obviously, they're not, you know, the same as the movie, which is fine. But they're still fun characters, man. You get to play a Star-Lord the whole time, and that's just a good time. Plus, the soundtrack is so flipping good, or flarking good, as they say in the game, flarking. Um... It's just a good time. Like it's an altogether good time. The battles are, the battles are fun. The story is really good. Like the story's gotten, you know, it's a really good job. Like it's gotten me a couple of times where I'm like, oh man, it's emotional. Um, didn't full out cry or anything like that. But I'm like, this is an emotional story. They put some, they put some work into this. So it's it's a good story. The soundtrack again is so flipping good. They got a band for the game called the Star Lord Band. Ugh, you can get the whole soundtrack. It's available. I know it's on my YouTube music because I have it. Um, I'm sure it's on every other music platform that you have as well. But I, yeah, the game, I actually suggest playing this game. I like, I don't know what you've heard. Uh, I'm not really looking at rankings right now. I do see IGN has an 8 out of 10. So that's pretty solid. So I don't know why this game has gotten, like, pushed under the rug or under the radar. But having an absolute blast with it. Can't wait to see how this thing ends. It's just, it's very big. It's very big and looks great, you know, and again, it plays really well to me, and the story is really good. There may, there may be some moments where it's a bit slow, but nothing to take me out of it, man. I'm into it and having a great time with it, so thank you PlayStation Plus for having that uh, free download for me, because I'm having a blast with this game. But that now leads into the other review for this episode, which is that 90s show, the uh, the final I finally watched the rest of the episodes, and the re again, tying into the name of this episode, Guardian of that 90s show, is that I personally really enjoyed this show. Uh, if you listen to last week's episode, I was a little apprehensive to begin with, just because I love that 70s show. Like, that 70s show is a, an all-timer for me, and, you know, going into the show, I was, like, really amped and excited, you know. Um, I knew we weren't going to get all the characters back. You know, uh, there's one that's you know, going through some legal troubles, and at the same time, I, I knew that the others would be cameos, except for uh, Kitty and Red, and, you know, the rest of us going to be focused on the new kids, I'm like, okay, that's fine, um, we'll, get, we'll get used to it, but it'll be, it'll be cool to be back there, 
And, you know, the first episode was, you know, he met it with some hesitation because he's like, man, I want my, want my show back. But, you know, you gotta, you gotta let that go and realize this is a new show and a new time period and a different time period, time period I grew up in, um, the nineties. So it's, it's been fun to see some of that stuff and hoping to see more. Uh, season two hasn't been announced yet. We don't know if season two is happening or not. It's kind of the worry with Netflix. They kind of cancel, you know, shows. They don't let shows go too long unless you're a stranger things. But, and even that's wrapping up soon. But I'm really honestly having a good time, or had a good time with the show, because I'm done with it now. Um, and just, yeah, it picked up. I get It gradually got better for me, and I got more comfortable with the new characters. And these freaking, these kids are doing a fantastic job playing the characters that they need to be playing. Um, I don't recognize anybody from this cast. I, I, I'm not going to be as bold enough to say that they're all new actors and actresses and all that. Uh, they probably are in stuff that I, that I just haven't seen. But, I mean, the lady playing Leia Foreman, you know, Donna and Eric's kid, fantastic. She's doing a great job. She's pulling it off to be their kid. Um, the kid playing Kelso and, Kelso and Jackie's kid, which that was a change. Um, <laughs> those two weren't together at the end of that 70s show. But he's doing a fantastic job. He's definitely a Kelso, you know, and just all of them, man, all of them are just solid in what they need to do. And like I said, you get more comfortable with the show as it goes on. And if you're one of those people that cares about rankings, the show's at a 6.5 out of 10 on IMDb, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, 75% critic score, 74% audience score. So pretty average um, scores there and close between the both of them. Like I, I've seen some hate for the show. I've seen some people say it's like a Disney channel show that wore off quickly for me. I was never fully on that Disney channel. Phil, I like, there's moments where it first started. I'm like, okay, I can see that. But as it went on, I'm like, nah, no, it went away. And then they, they picked up some references from that 70s show. And, but more importantly, they built their own like vibe, you know, adding the nineties part into it. And I, I don't hate it, man. Like, I really enjoyed it. Like, honestly, when I was watching it and binge-watching those last couple of episodes, and, you know, it tells you uh, when the credits hit and it's about to go to the next episode, it's like two episodes left. I'm like, no! <laughs> like, no. And then when it got to the last episode, I'm like, no! Because I wasn't ready for it to end. I didn't want it to end. I was having a, a good time with the show as it was going on. And it was like, man, this sucks. And then, you know, when we got over, I'm like, man, I don't want it to end. That's how, like, invested I got into it, which is a good thing for me with a show if it's going to keep me that invested because as you've heard on this show there's some shows I haven't gone back to watch that I, I did enjoy I just haven't gone back to watch them. <coughs> Mandalorian <coughs> Riverdale but absolutely did end up falling in love with the show um, and I hope there's a season 2 and, and so much so like I'm ready to watch the show again not even 24 hours after I finished watching the show like it hit me like I want to watch the show again because it, it's it's fun. It's got like it's got the bit of nostalgia that you'd want from you know that '70s show, if you're a fan of that '70s show. But it's got enough to where you know these kids are doing a good job. Like they're doing a good job, especially with a first season. Like go back and watch any show. First season's always a little awkward. It's a little it's a little weird. You gotta get used to it. You gotta get used to the vibe of the new characters and these new actors and actresses and everything. So to me. The show is good. The show is a good time. It's it's fun. It's really fun. I will definitely probably go back and revisit it um, probably sometime soon. Like, I planned on revisiting Wednesday as well, but this show might just, you know, I haven't gotten back to Wednesday, but that 90s show I've been kind of clamoring to get back to, and I probably will get back to before I get back to Wednesday, which is weird to say because I did love Wednesday, but just I guess it's maybe the freshness of that 90s show where I like I want to go back and just pick up on some other things that maybe I didn't pick up on the first season. I don't know. Probably end up watching both shows, you know, doing like a mix in between. But uh, yeah, I absolutely, as I'm wearing a Wednesday shirt, um, I absolutely adore that 90s show, and I, I seriously hope that Netflix does the right thing and renews it for season two because I think they they deserve a season two. I think they did a good job and definitely give it the time um, to grow because it will be good. The worry is there, you know, of course, will it, if it does end up being good, I mean, again, 75 and 74%, that's respectable. Um, you know, I'm not somebody who depends on scores for me to know if something is good or not. I watch it either way. A lot of stuff I like is scored very poorly on, you know, stuff like Rotten Tomatoes. But, I mean, that seems like a good enough score. I mean, it's got the tomato next to it, so that means it's fresh, right? I don't know. I don't know how that works, but 
yeah, hey, give the show a try. Like, give it a real, a real go. Like again, get for the first two episodes. That was what it was for me. I got through the first two episodes, and you know, after that, I was like hooked in, hook, line, and sinker for it. So. Do it, man. I enjoyed it. And again, guardian of that 90 show because I'm protective of the show. I really enjoy it and really like it. Uh, it kind of reminds me of when uh, Girl Meets World came out. I think I talked about this last week where there's that, you know, that initial feeling you need to get through because, you know, obviously the nostalgia is there. Now, of course, with Girl Meets World, the I had a couple of the characters there still. Um, I don't know. I haven't watched Girl Meets World in a while, but, it, you know, Cory and Topanga were there in every episode. Um and then this show, you got Red and Kitty in every episode, but the rest of the cast, not too often there. Um, but, you know, you got to get used to it and you got to give it time. And then, you know, you get that vibe. So if you grew up watching, you know, Boy Meets World, you had to give time to Girl Meets World to get there. And um, with that 90 show, if you grew up watching that 70 show, you have to give that 90 show some time. Because obviously, again, it's going to be a different vibe. It's going to be a different feel, but so still enough of that 70s into the 90s. That will like get you and you're like, oh yeah, man, good on them and good job on the new character. So yes, 100% say give it a go. Again, took me the first two episodes, a little awkward first first two episodes, but after I got past those two, fantastic time. It's not even to say those episodes are bad, it just had to get used to it. But man, enjoy that show and I'm hoping for a season two and more. Uh, again, the worry, I think I started talking about this thing I sidetracked, but the worry of if it'll get as long as that 70s show did, like that 70s show had a ton of seasons, you know, Netflix doesn't really do that, um, Netflix isn't known for giving shows a long run, so we'll have to wait and see and everything, of course I'll have the news for you, if it does, and hopefully will get picked up for more seasons, but there you go man, Guardian, call me the Guardian of that 90s show from now on, because I support that show. All right, so uh talked about it earlier. Let's go ahead and jump into the news. I only have one thing here to talk about DC-wise that I don't want to talk about again. DC is dropping, uh, it should be, I mean, has an official, I don't think I've seen an official announcement about this, but James Gunn did say he'll let us know some of the slate in January, and as they're recording this episode tomorrow is the end of January, so uh, it'll be there, and, uh, you know, all reports are that he'll give us some information tomorrow. Uh, if you're listening to the show later in the week, well, that information is already, is already out, and I already have a show out for that, because I will be doing a special show for uh, the DCU's first look. Can't wait, man. I'm excited about that. But the one thing I wanted to talk about DC-wise here is something that broke earlier today before all this came out, and that was that Dave Batista has been talking uh, DCU, especially the character Bane. Now, if you remember, D, uh, Dave has been wanting to play Batista, uh, Jeez, been wanting to play Bane for quite some time, um, and I brought that up as well. When James Gunn took over, I'm like, oh, I guess he can finally play that character of Bane. Well, he had something uh, different to say this time around, saying, quote, I have had conversations with James about that, um, but I think the direction he's leaning in and completely rebooting that whole universe, he's starting from scratch, and I think you need to do that, end quote. Now, that's like the first time we've heard anything about a complete reboot. We've speculated about a complete reboot. We've heard soft reboot. We've heard a uh, Flash film will set up something. Uh, it's the first time I've seen completely rebooting in a uh, quote about James Gunn's DCU. Again, we'll have to wait for James Gunn to give us the full in on that. Um, speaking of Gunn and co-CEO, co-chair Peter Safran, he said that both of them, they need to start from scratch, reimagining the cinematic universe with younger talent front and center. You need to start to plan for the next 15 years, and I just don't think you can do that with me. And I understand that. He goes on to say, quote, and also I have to say that I appreciate that because I don't want to play a character that I can't bring justice to. I don't think at this point in my career that I can bring justice to Bane anymore. I just don't know if I could handle the physical part, and I don't think... I would have the longevity to plan ahead for films, so I just don't know if I'd be that guy. So, one thing, kind of contradicting himself there, uh, saying that in the first quote, they're completely rebooting that whole universe, um, that he's leaning in, but I think the direction he's leaning in, completely, completely rebooting that universe, and then later on he says, I think they should reboot the whole universe, kind of contradictory. Again, we'll have to wait for James Gunn to give us the real end there. But, you know, good on him for being you know, noticeable of that. And now, I mean, I don't think Bane would get any solo movies or anything like that nature. Maybe a show. Um, I don't know what the longevity plan would be for uh, um, a character like Bane. 
and that's nothing against the character of Bane. It's just you know Bane is a you know a side villain for for Batman. So it's like I I, I don't know most I I don't know <laughs> I don't know, but I mean I I talked about it last week. James Gunn plans on bringing the Guardians actors over to DC, and we can also course all speculate and all that and have some fun with like oh chris pratt's gonna be the new batman and you're all like ah that couldn't work but guess what they said that about michael keaton and everybody now is like oh michael keaton is my all-time favorite batman so hey anything can happen um, i'm not saying that's gonna happen who knows what who chris pratt will play who knows who zoe saldana will play who knows who you know karen gillian would play um bradley cooper i mean bradley cooper for all rights probably could probably be batman um I don't want to say that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, Vin Diesel. I don't like Vin Diesel, so hopefully he's nowhere there. Um, sorry. Not a Vin Diesel fan. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Guardians will be there in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, we'll see who Dave ends up playing. Again, I don't know that Bane would be a character that would need... I, I don't know. I guess he's thinking longevity-wise of, you know, when he would have to show up as Bane. Because, you know, they're doing this thing in the universe and all that. And the character would cross over and all that, so... Nonetheless, just interesting to see him talking about that because it's something that's been rumored and he's been wanting for a long time. And then especially him saying completely rebooting uh, is the first time again I've heard, you know, an actor close to James Gunn saying that I haven't heard anything. You know, it's always been speculation and rumor and that just makes it seem just a little bit more likely. And again, we got the Flash movie um, to see what happens there and then going in the future. But again, uh, look out for my episode about the DC slate the first the first look at the dc slate because i will definitely be deep diving into that maybe i'll make it a video who knows i'm awkward on camera um let's see let's go ahead that was all the dc stuff for now uh going into horror uh robert eggers and william defoe will be teaming up again for robert eggers nosferatu reimagining film uh his nosferatu is a gothic tale of obsession between a haunted young woman who is played by lily rose depp in 19th century Germany and the ancient Transylvanian vampire who is being played by Bill Skarsgård who stalks her, uh, bringing untold horror with him. They work together on The Lighthouse and The Northman. Uh, it's unknown who William Defoe will be playing in the Nosferatu film, but it is interesting to think that uh, Defoe has played Nosferatu before uh, and even earned an Oscar nomination for playing the character in Shadow of the Vampire. So... Good on him. I mean, William Defoe's good, and he's freaking creepy as hell. You know, I mean, he can play a creepy character for sure. William Defoe himself probably isn't creepy. I don't know. I don't know. I've never met the guy, but you know, he does a good job playing creepy characters. Uh, let's see. A new take on Stephen King's *Children of the Corn* is sneaking up on us like a bunch of freaking *Children of the Corn*, as it has a release date of March third. I don't know about y'all. Maybe y'all are more nose to ear of corn here. <laughs> I said, shut up. Um, that. I haven't heard anything about this movie in <laughs> quite some time. I remember maybe some rumblings a long time ago, but like like right before, it might have been the first film that started filming after the pandemic happened. And I haven't heard anything since then. But yeah, it's releasing in March, March 3rd. It's hitting theaters March 3rd and then hitting demand and digital on March 21st. Good for him. You know, Stephen King, hot property since it took off a number of years ago. And, you know, all of his properties are being remade and retooled and reshaped and re-released and all that good stuff. So, good for Stephen King. I've enjoyed a lot of the stuff. Uh, it's being reported that in this new take, it is said to have very little to do with King's novel. Well, what the hell? Um, let's see. A psycho, psychopathic... Psychopathic, yeah. 12-year-old girl in a small town in Nebraska recruits... All the other children in goes on a bloody rampage, killing the corrupt adults and anyone else who opposes her. A bright high schooler who won't go along with the plan is the town's only hope for survival. All right, All right cool. Uh, children of the Corn is on the way very soon. Sneaking up on us, man. Let's see, Screenbox, which is continuing to be something as I adjust my headset. Sorry for the noise there. Uh, Screenbox is a service I'm probably going to have to... You know, start getting because they have something else coming. They have the Chucky documentary that's coming, um, Living with Chucky, which is getting really good reviews as well. Uh, so I'd have to get Streambox for that, anyways. But they have announced another documentary that's coming. It seems like it'll be really good, and it is celebrating the career of horror legend Robert England. Uh, it's called Hollywood Dreams and Nightmares, a Robert England story. Uh, it's an epic 
documentary that will be coming to Screenbox in June. We'll feature interviews, of course, with Robert England and his wife, Nancy. Oh, that's that's amazing. His wife is Nancy. Um, not the lady who played Nancy, not Heather Langenkamp, but that's that's it's a fun little Easter egg there. Um, but Heather Langenkamp will be one of the interviews, of course, on are in the documentary as well as Lynn Shea, Eli Roth, Kane Hodder, Tony Todd, and Bill Mosley, and more. Uh, the documentary will follow England's career from his early days uh, up to, of course, Freddy Krueger and the big, huge, huge break that was for him. Uh, his directorial debut in 976 Evil, and even going all the way up to, most recently, his role in Stranger Things, man. Robert England seems like a good dude, especially when he did an interview with the Haunter's Brethren on this show. Uh, so, that was a good interview, man. Good pull by them to get Robert England. Good job. Uh, but, yeah, can't wait to see that. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to scream, get screen box. I'm going to have to look into that. Like, you know, I mean, I already have Shudder, and I love Shudder. That's my favorite. It's my favorite uh, streaming service. <laughs> but, uh, let's see, screen box. I just want to know how much screen box is. Man, just scrolling through this real quick, it has a lot of. Wow, it has a lot of stuff. Holy crap. Doing a quick Google of how much it's screen box. It says the plan only costs four ninety nine per month. That's not bad. Or you can get it annually for forty or thirty nine ninety nine. Uh yeah, I'll probably end up doing that actually. I think that's cheaper than Shutter. I think Shutter is like six, seven dollars, nine dollars, somewhere around there. Um, <laughs> I like how I just completely left eight out. But yeah, that's not too bad. I'll have to I ended up doing that. All right, and I cannot end the spooky talk without doing the proper thing, and that is paying tribute to uh, the amazing Lisa Loring, who we sadly lost um, recently. She is, of course, known forever for playing the original on-screen Wednesday Adams in the Adams Family show that ran during the 60s, a series that I absolutely love and is my all-time favorite show and will forever be my all-time favorite show you know me i love the adams family to death and that show is just everything to me and she was so amazing in the show and she was one of the few uh, surviving members left of the show and now you know we've lost her and we're losing you know uh, you know everything from that show you know and sad to think about that because how much I love that show and of course with her passing the only surviving member of the cast at the moment is John Ashton who is 92 years old and you know it's only a matter of time sadly um it's still my favorite Gomez as well but yeah Lisa was so great in the role you know thinking about that in the time of the 60s and she was playing that character and she just so amazing and again iconic and will go down in history as the first ever Wednesday, and, you know, we, of course, most recently had Jenna Ortega's fantastic uh, job as playing the character, and then uh, before that, we had Christina Rishi's fantastic take on the character, but there will always be Lisa, as she was the first Wednesday, and she was fantastic, and definitely a different vibe um, between, you know, her Wednesday and the, the Rishi and Ortega uh, Wednesdays, but, you know, you can tell the influence that you know, they had, especially again with Jenna, and especially that dance that took over uh, TikTok and became so famous, she paid tribute to Lisa in it. So, yeah, it was definitely sad to see her go. And, you know, again, we only have one surviving cast member of the show now, and it sucks, man. It sucks, but, yeah, big bucket of win for her. Fantastic career, absolute icon in the spooky realm. And, you know, I saw Butch Patrick play tribute to her, which is great. You know, there's always that Adam Family Monsters thing with people, but it's great to see him pay tribute to her and seeing the tribute come out. Jenna Ortega recently paid tribute to her as well, which was great to see. And just, you know, again, icon and uh, sadly gone. Uh, thank you, Lisa, for being amazing as Wednesday, and we will relive your amazing performance as the first ever live action Wednesday forever because that show will always be loved especially by me and my household <laughs> you know when i say my household i mean me <laughs> you know but yeah had to do it can't not do this show without paying tribute to her all right let's jump into the other bits of news before we close this thing out um jafar jackson has been cast as michael jackson and you're like who's jafar jackson well jafar jackson is none other than michael jackson's nephew <laughs> um so jafar jackson will be playing his uncle Michael Jackson in the upcoming biopic Michael, which is directed by Anto, Anton Fuqua, um, 
Let's see, quote, it's incredibly exciting to watch Jafar bring Michael to life. Okwa said in a statement with Variety, there was such a spiritual connection when I first met Jafar, who has a natural ability to emulate Michael and such a great chemistry with the camera. Um, according to the studio, the biopic will explore all aspects of the late King of Pop's life, including his most iconic performances that led him to become the greatest entertainer of all time, end quote, which he absolutely is. He is the King of Pop, always will forever be the King of Pop. Get out of here, Justin Timberlake. Get out of here. Anybody else? Michael Jackson is the king. Um, in addition to detailing his legacy, it will also it also won't shy away from Michael's controversies, according to Deadline. Um, stupid controversies. Uh, people just trying to make money. As always, as happens. Um, but yeah, that's good on him for getting a Jackson to play Michael Jackson. That's And hearing that a spiritual connection and has the chemistry and can emulate Michael pretty well. I mean, can't wait to see it. I am a Michael Jackson fan. I love Michael's music. I think Michael is fantastic. And, you know, all the stuff he did. I mean, he was incredible. He's the king of pop. <laughs> for sure. Elvis is the king of rock. Michael's the king of pop. Never change. Neither one will ever change. And, you know, Michael had an influence on everybody. He had some of the greatest songs. I mean, we just got out of Spooky Season. Thriller is a played every single year. And you just watch that movie. That movie, because it is a movie. It's a short film. It's just so incredible. And he's done other stuff with horror. And, you know, he's made other short films. It's just iconic music after iconic music. So I can't wait to see how this movie turns out, especially coming off of Elvis, which is my favorite film of last year. And, you know, Rocket Man, I really enjoyed Bohemian Rhapsody, meh, about. But, uh, still not an overly bad movie. They just messed some things up there. But, I, I'm surprised that they got a Jackson to play Michael Jackson. That's a good move. Uh, let's see. Eddie Murphy wants to reprise the role of Donkey in a fifth Shrek movie or even a Donkey spinoff film. Uh, Murphy had the following to say, quote, I'd absolutely be open if they ever came with another Shrek. I'd do it in two seconds. I love Donkey. Um, you know, they did Puss in Boots movies. I was like, they should have did a Donkey movie. Donkey is funnier than Puss in Boots. I mean, I love Puss in Boots, but he ain't funny as as the Donkey. I would do a Donkey movie. I would do another Shrek in two seconds. Uh, DreamWorks, if you all want to do it, just call me. I'm ready. I'm sitting here and ready to do Donkey. <laughs> um... I have not watched the Shrek films in quite some time, but I do remember the first movie pretty well. I don't even know if I've watched the other Shrek movies. I don't know. Uh, vaguely remember. No, I don't even vaguely remember. I don't think I watched them. I just, watched, I just remember the first one. And really enjoyed it. Eddie Murphy was freaking fantastic. And, of course, you've got the, the character meet and greet at, at Universal Studios, which sounds a lot like him and just incredible um but yeah i mean why not why wouldn't you do that i mean if eddie murphy wants to do it what are you waiting for <laughs> i mean that's what are you waiting for uh i feel like shrek made dreamworks uh let's look into this shall we uh, let's see the shrek franchise released four feature four there's four shrek movies you gotta be kidding me there's four of them God, i don't even remember them i remember the first one jeez i thought there was only three there's four between 2001 and 2010. Okay, whatever. Uh, the original Shrek turned DreamWorks Animation into a powerhouse studio. All right, well, yep, there you go. Uh, the movie also became the first Oscar winner in the animated feature category. Hey, there you go. I mean, that first Shrek movie is really good. I'm not going to sit here and deny that, so. Yeah, do it. I mean, what are you waiting? Just do more Shrek movies and do the donkey movie. If, 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 what are we waiting for? Just do it. All right, and speaking of... People in this last bit of news here. Speaking of someone wanting to reprise a role, Tobey Maguire has revealed that he is up to donning the Spider-Man suit in future, future, Jesus, future MCU movies, saying, quote, I love these films and I love all the different series. Uh, if these guys called me and said, would you show up tonight to hang out and goof around or would you show up to do this movie or read a scene or do a Spider-Man thing? It would be a yes, because why wouldn't I want to do that? I mean, why not? You know, it worked very well for the Spider-Man No Way Home No Way Home movie. And, of course, obviously, I'm going to want more Andrew Garfield stuff. But, yeah, I mean, there, there's openings for Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, especially with Secret Wars and all that stuff coming up, where you could do that and you could bring him back. And why not? I mean, people love him. Uh, he was the first Spider-Man for a lot of people. So, why not do it? And it's good to see him open to it. I feel like he... 
you know, I don't know. I can, I can say this for sure because I don't know for sure. So I'm kind of backtracking at the moment. But I feel like maybe he stepped away from the character for a while and wasn't interested in putting the suit back on. But then, you know, of course, he recently put the suit back on for No Way Home and ended up being a great thing. So good for them. Good for them. You know, again, I just want Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. That's my Spider-Man forever and always. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. And that's going to be it for the show, man. Guardian of the 90s show is coming to an end. Again, please like, subscribe, uh, support, share the network with uh, any and everybody you can think of. If you're in college, pin it to your college board, man. Uh, if you're, you know, at home and, you know, chatting it up with people, talk about the show. <laughs> you know, uh, share it throughout the Internet. Do whatever you can. But uh, we appreciate you. We know you're here supporting us. If you're, I guess, your fresh time here, man. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me goof off. I uh, remember there will be a special DCU episode coming up of the Review at Rob show where we, we, when I mean we, I mean me, um, talk about the DCU slate uh, that we're going to get from James Gunn. Some of it, not the whole thing, but we're going to get some bits and pieces of information, which very highly interested to see what we're getting there. And, you know, other than that, you've got all the other shows that'll be here. you got the Metal Groove podcast, You've got the Mr. Wonderful Show still doing the best of as he's getting ready to drop a new take on his show. You've got Improper Guidance doing its thing over there. No, you don't. You don't have Improper Guidance. Improper Guidance is on, on break at the moment. But you got the Improper Guidance crew. Let's see what happened there. Doing Core Memory Unlocked. Um, and let's see. You got I Guess This Is Growing Up podcast. We got all kinds of stuff going down over here, man. We got a lot. If I'm forgetting anything, that's because we got so much stuff going on. That's why you gotta like and subscribe and get the notifications, man, because there's just so much cool stuff going on. And go pick you up a Reveal Rob shirt. What are we waiting for? I'm the champion. The first ever champion. That needs to be the new shirt. First ever champion. The new Reveal Rob shirt and just put on the back. First ever Throw Me Podcast Network champion. I don't know. And no, no, no. Like the old WWE shirts like just review it rob but you have like john Cena used to wear the shirt you have the title at the bottom of the shirt you have to talk about this these are things i'm talking about right now anyways <laughs> appreciate you taking the time to listen to the show um hogwarts legacy is getting close to coming out i will be playing the heckins out of that heckins where did i learn heckins heckins what is that that is heckins where did i get that from oh 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 um show I watch on YouTube. What the hell? I'm drawing a blank. Why am I drawing a Grim Grim Life Collective? I watch a lot of that stuff. That's where it just jumped into my freaking vocabulary there. Uh, but yeah, appreciate you taking the time to listen to the show. Went, wow, this show is 37 minutes. Uh, close to 37. Alright, let's close this thing out. Because <laughs> I have another show coming out this week. We don't want to listen to me all that much, do we? Yeah, you do. I'm fantastic. I'm the first ever champion. Uh, anyways, appreciate you taking the time to listen to my show and the Throw Me, supporting the Throw Me Podcast Network. We appreciate you all and remember that happiness can always be found, even in the darkest of times, if one remembers to turn on the light. Talk to you all next episode.